in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We walk through water and through fire, but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place. Hallelujah. So let's start off tonight's teaching. Thank you, Jesus. I'll start tonight by examining the mindset of the rich versus the mindset of the poor. Write it very quickly. If you like, you can create a column into two. You can write one rich, the other one poor. Let's see how the rich think. Let's go into their minds and see how wealthy people think. Since we have established the fact that the prosperity of any man is not just from the physical money that comes, but the quality of his mental transition. There is a way that the wealthy think. There is a way that the rich think that brings financial resources to them. And there is a way that the poor think. Are you ready now? So we're going to be contrasting. And most of us are going to be seeing ourselves. We'll be seeing the mindsets that we have had, that we have preserved, that have been responsible for the poverty in our lives. And the goal is that as I teach, you begin to switch. Switch in your mind. The moment you see yourself in that category of the poor, you must begin to have a determination to change. Praise the Lord. You make all things new, yes. You make all things new and I will follow you forward. That's what it's doing in our minds right now. You make all things new, yes. You make all things new and I will follow you forward. The first difference between the rich and the poor is that the rich believe in taking responsibility for the outcome of their lives while the poor believe in luck and chance so write it under the category of the rich right that the rich believe in taking responsibility for the outcome of their lives they believe that they have a role to play in their wealth and financial abundance every wealthy man justly wealthy not crooks not corrupt people everyone justly wealthy especially in the kingdom they believe that they, there is a participation from their own end to determine the outcome of their lives if they are to get into the wealthy place they believe that they believe in taking responsibility over their financial destiny still the same point while the poor believe in luck and chance are you seeing i'm contrasting the mindsets now the poor believe in luck they believe in chance they believe in modern nature they hope that one day something will change they love that saying how can they lie sharia we are poor because god wants it that way right they are the ones who teach oh god give them so that through them we will get it's a devilish mentality. Don't ever use that kind of word again. You are cursing yourself and cursing your destiny. You disqualify yourself from receiving the blessings of the kingdom. Say amen. So mindset number one, the rich believe in taking responsibility. Say after me, in the name of Jesus, I take responsibility for the outcome of my finances. In the name of Jesus, I take responsibility for my financial destiny. Say in the name of Jesus, I stop blaming parents 
I stop blaming friends. I stop blaming circumstances. I take full responsibility for the outcome of my financial destiny. The moment you get to that point, you are beginning to be like the rich. My brother did not give me the 100,000. Otherwise, I would have bought more goods and then my shop would have expanded. You are a liar. That's not the reason. Leave your brother alone and leave him in peace. He may have done you bad, but that's not the reason. The poor love passing responsibility. They love it when they say, no, it's because of government. No, that's not the reason. The flaw of government revealed a flaw in you that had been there. See that? Number two. The rich are very disciplined and patient people. Underline the word discipline and patience. The rich are very disciplined and patient people. While the poor are very indisciplined and very impatient. Financially speaking and generally speaking. The poor are so careless. Careless over their financial resources. They are not disciplined. Most people think the rich are the ones who do get rich quick things. No, no. The poor are the ones who always want sharp, sharp money. They always want all kinds of things. Every wealthy man understands the place of discipline and patience. Hallelujah. It's a wealthy man that will be worth 10 million naira and he will still be taking back because he's trying to build his wealth. A wealthy man will be 10 million naira worth yet he's staying in one small room because he's building. A poor man, if he gets 100 or 1 million naira, he will rent a house of 600,000, buy a suit of 100,000, and die with the remaining 400,000. Very impatient people. And there is a pressure, listen, especially for us, the young people, there is so much pressure in our generation to prove that you are making it. Right? The moment someone graduates, everybody is saying, so how far, how far, how far, what is happening? And then we try to look for all kinds of ways. You kill yourself and buy a suit of 100,000 and that's all your savings home and abroad. You buy a watch of 25,000, buy a shoe of 30,000 and where you stand, the people you are talking to are so poor, they don't even know the difference between a watch of 2,000 and a watch of 25,000. So the effort to impress them has been wasted. Hallelujah. The rich are very disciplined people. Very disciplined. They don't waste money. Go to the restaurant and see the way the poor eat. You will be shocked. You will think they just won a lottery. Madam, eat they? Yes. And you say, bring it. And they, they eat carelessly and foolishly and they spend all the money. When their friends come in, guy, how far now? I sit down, sit down. Don't worry, don't worry. I will arrange things for you. This is a poor man. Look at what he's doing. It's, that one is not just giving. It's called financial carelessness. Are we learning something? And then he finds out that money is running away from him perpetually. Number three. The rich and wealthy believe in the law of process. They believe in the law of process. They know that it takes time to build wealth. Wealth, true wealth and prosperity is a function of time. The rich believe in the law of process. The poor always want results without process. That's why they get into all kinds of things. That's why they are deceived and swindled around. They get into all kinds of things because they are poor from the mind not from their business from the mind the poor like processes with they like results without process so you meet somebody around the park and the person calls you right like we have many in our in our society we've had so many stories of those people they call you around they act as though they are strangers or they send you an email you have just won two million us dollars or 10 million and you are not even afraid to read the mail you open it and smile and they write there they say don't tell anybody 
and you keep quiet you call your friend and say ah this miracle service the prayer is it's not miracle service you are about to get into trouble how many people have been swindled of 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 their hard earned money because of getting into schemings let me tell you anything that does not subscribe to the law of process run away from it breakthrough comes instantly but preparation from that for that breakthrough takes time it is the manifestation that is instant not the preparation in one day you can become a millionaire but after a season of preparation are you getting the point now you don't prepare one day no sir no sir it took joseph one day to become a prime minister but it took him 12 years to prepare for that position it took moses one day to exit uh, the people out just one plague overnight but it took him 40 years at the back side of the mountain hallelujah it took jesus three days only three days to fulfill his assignment he died was buried resurrected in three days the plan of salvation was over but it took him about 30 years to prepare so the rich where are we the rich believe in the law of process and the poor jump process right they jump a lot of process they want result sharp sharp someone just comes with a phone and say guy buy this phone now and you will sell it you didn't ask him where he got the money the person who is trying to sell the phone to you is looking like an arm robber and most likely he is and you are there because you want it sharp sharp may the lord deliver us from this sharp sharp mentality in the name of jesus christ never be under pressure to prove to people that i want to make it sharp sharp you want to start a shop in one day and you want to have 100 customers in one day you want to start a restaurant in one day and you want to be the leading that's what has led men of god to witchcraft they start a church and in one year they want 5,000 members in one year the man wants protocol in one year he wants to go on air in one year he wants to have the best of sound the best of church activity so he will have to go and, and bow down to some godless things how many people are in occults today many of our parents have joined fraternities and occults because they want sharp sharp money they join all kinds of clubs and societies that don't make sense they initiate them into godless things the rich and the wealthy the truly rich and the wealthy they know that it takes time it takes time it takes time warren buffett one of the well the world's wealthiest man I think he should be in his 70s or 80s right now. A billionaire. Over 70 billion dollars worth or thereabout. He started, he knew what I'm teaching you now. As early as age 8. But it took him at least 4 or 5 decades. Are you seeing that? The path to wealth can be accelerated but not rushed. You can accelerate it. God is the God of speed, not rush. He gives men speed, but he does not rush men. Tarry in Jerusalem. As desperate as I want the gospel of the kingdom to reach the earth. Tarry in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power. Say, I receive grace to follow the due process that brings lasting wealth. Say it one more time. I receive the grace to follow the due process. Hallelujah. Number four now. The rich always plan and set goals. The rich always plan and set goals. While the poor are always impulsive and reactive. Always impulsive. The rich always plan if they want to build they settle down like the bible says they count the cost how much will it take us to build okay it will take seven million how much do we have now 
200,000. It's nothing compared to what we want. What can 200,000 do right now? 200,000 can buy at least, we can buy four bags of cement and a few sharp sand. Come and pour it. Intimidate the devil with it. Put the cement there and pour the sand and go back home. You are taking a step. They plan. But the, the, the poor, they behave, they can go out in one day. I've said it again, many of our parents do that. In one day, they go back and come up with things they don't plan for. This is how the poor, let a poor man enter a boutique. He just planned to go and get shoe. And his budget was 7,000. But he enters a boutique and the blue light is there. Everything is shining. And they say they just brought this. I mean, they just came from Italy. This is from Dubai. This is from Turkey. This is original. Touch it, feel it. And he's looking. Carelessness is about to happen right away. Because he's about to be erratic. He's under pressure. Tell about a guy, you don't pass this level now. And he say, oh yeah, how much, how much? He say, oh yeah, because of you. Bring 13K. He's paying. The, the 100,000 he took there was for something. But because there's no planning, he ended up buying something that was not, you bought a cloth that was not your size. You knew it was not your size, but they convinced you so much. The blue light made you to see it and you bought it. And you went home, you are angry with yourself, everybody, your friend. How about you're a bad friend, you didn't advise me. Whereas you were there bragging, feeling like a rich man. A wealthy man is not embarrassed. To tell you no this is not this is this is beyond my budget for now i will plan and i can come back there is nothing embarrassing say how about guy you you that you are staying in a 20 million naira house it tells you that's not the issue i work based on budget that's how the rich think poor people are always under pressure they just give you pocket money or you get your salary of of 30,000 and you are going and your plan is to go quietly to a restaurant where 500 naira can feed you. Somebody comes to push you to a restaurant that is bigger than your level. And then you go there and while you are buying food, you find some other people and they say, ah, your salary is there. We will die with you here until you buy this. And you end up spending half of your money. Have you seen that happen to our parents? They collect salary and over the weekend, the money is finished. They think it's because the money is small. The man was saying that when he was a primary staff, at a managerial level, weekend is still finishing his money because of that mindset. Always plan and set goals. Always plan and set goals. Don't be impulsive. Don't just do things because you have to do them. It's okay if you need to do them at that point and the reasons are justified. Otherwise, do not be embarrassed at all. Don't get into that pressure of pushing yourself to the wall. Set goals. Set goals. If you don't need a car, don't buy it. If you need only three trousers, work with three trousers. There's no reason having hundred trousers with nothing in your pocket. You flaunt trousers around and they look as if there's something in it. And there's why not invest in your mind? Praise the Lord. I've told us again and again in this place. Stop trying to look rich. Pay the price and be rich. There's nothing honorable about trying to look rich. Pay the price and be rich. You can see a wealthy man, especially here in the north. You can see somebody who is a multi-millionaire. And he can just wear his jalabia and wear his pants and just be smiling. No pressure. He can even enter a golf to the bank. Whereas the poor man collected loan of 7 million, bought a car of 5 million, rented an apartment of 2 million and will spend the rest of his life paying that debt. And the poor man just enters. There's nothing and he just enters. How are you? You see him using a simple phone. Whereas somebody, you ask the person, how much is in, in your, your account? 500 naira. How much phone are you using? 130 iPhone. What? Six. You just bought it. It just came out and you bought it. Nobody to communicate to because you don't have any, any collection of rich, sensible people. Who are you sending a mail to? How is the mail going to increase your worth? Hallelujah. Say, I refuse to be under pressure. I set goals and I work with goals. Hallelujah. 
Number five, the rich see challenges as opportunities and stepping stones. Oh, how powerful. The rich see challenges as opportunities and stepping stones while the poor see challenges as stumbling blocks and obstacles. Very powerful psychological difference between the rich and the poor. The rich, every time they see challenges, number one, they never call them problems. Rich men never say problem. They say challenges. Hallelujah. And they see challenges as a stepping stone. They see challenges as an opportunity to learn more. They see challenges as an opportunity to grow more. But poor people. Let a poor man start a business and it crashes. And you hear him regretting. It's you oh, that told me, I've, I've always hated poultry. I hate chickens. I hate poultry. They can die anyhow. And the, the rich man says, no, my own. I lost beds three times. Three sets. I lost 5,000 beds in one day. And the poor, I, I, I can't take that. And they remain poor. Because they are unwilling to step out of their comfort zone. The rich see challenges as opportunities. Look up please for a while. How have you interpreted the challenges that have come in your life? Especially financial challenges. Hallelujah. What is your interpretation of challenges? Do you see them as an opportunity to learn more? To know more? To access greater light? Or do you see them as stumbling blocks? There are many people today, many people today, they refuse to go and get jobs because one time they got a job and they fired everybody in the company and they have seen that challenge as an obstacle and they want to avoid that embarrassment. Whereas somebody who was poor kept applying, kept applying and now the person is working in an oil company. Say after me from today I see challenges as an opportunity to learn to improve and to grow. I change my attitude. I change my response towards challenges. Very powerful. Two people can go through the same thing. The experience will make one wiser and better and wealthier. Another, it will become the reason why he will never move forward. Hallelujah. You ask your parents, for instance, why have you not set up something now? They say, look, let me tell you, you are a small boy, that's why. In 1970, is it two or three? I can't remember exactly. I think we did something like that. And then your mother will concur. Yes, we did something like that. What did we even do? We started producing ice and nobody bought it. The ice will freeze there. They will take light. It will melt again. It will freeze there and the business packed up. And because of that, because of that, they have seen that challenge as an obstacle. They've seen it as a stumbling block. Hallelujah. Say, I refuse to see challenges as obstacles. When others are seeing obstacles, I see opportunities. Please say it. When others are seeing obstacles, I see opportunity. Your attitude towards challenges is what will determine whether that challenge will kill you or you will rise above it two people can have a carryover two people can have carryovers for one he just looks and says so this is how my life will end so i'm truly dull that thing they said is not a lie i'm seeing the proof right in front of me whereas somebody looks and says there's no problem this is a challenge I will come back and I will give it to life. Because of this thing, I will establish a university in the future. I'm on my way coming. I may cry right now, but I see it as an opportunity to rise. Whereas for somebody, he looks and says, if you like, call me a dollar, you are right. Are you getting what I'm saying? Two people will be um, intimidated and, and, and affected by armed robbers armed robbers will come into a street and rob every house is that good no but i'm saying they rob the house they seize jewelries seize everything two years after that robbery one family has renovated their house where they broke the glass they have improved on it 
The armed robbery gave them an opportunity to renovate the house. Have you seen people like that? The door that they broke, they now brought security doors. Whereas one neighbor is still angry, using banana leaves to cover the place where they did the stealing and still angry. You see him tie it and say, everybody that comes to the house, say, come. This is where this idiot came and stole our money. Two years afterwards, he has seen that as an obstacle. Are you getting what I'm saying now? He has refused to move forward. Whereas one has used the opportunity to renovate his house. Your attitude towards challenges will determine whether you will use them as ladders or they will become a load that will destroy you. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I change my attitude towards challenges. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I change my attitude towards challenges. Someone was fired. Two people were fired. For one, it became the beginning of the tragedy of his life. Ten years after being fired, he became a miserable man. Turned into a miserable husband. Turned into a miserable father. And, and, and the list goes on and on. For someone, the moment they fired him, he said, no, the owner of this company does not have two heads. I will make up my mind. And in three years, he's already employing 100 people. Attitude. I know so many people who were fired and they went back to their boss after two or three years. They said, thank you for firing me. It was the best thing that happened to me. The giant in me was sleeping. That, that, that firing letter did something to me. I got interested in the issue of finances. When they wanted to lock us in the prison when we could not pay the sound. Right? Sometimes... <laughs> Challenges can be a gift, brothers and sisters. It will shake you. The day the landlord says, come out! And he's packing your clothes out. And you're saying, oh God, don't embarrass me. I will go. But just wait. In the night, I will run and give you your key. And he says, no way. This morning, here and now, carry your pregnant wife and your twins and go out of my house. And you are now, you are embarrassed. And you are moving with your wife, pregnant and twins. And people are saying, look at you irresponsible men how can this man the twins and then the woman is still pregnant sometimes it will take you to the cave of adulam like david and that's where you begin to sit down and say look something is wrong i'm getting something wrong challenges really bring us to the place of destiny they create defining moments in our lives but your attitude towards challenges will determine whether you will stay there hallelujah is god speaking to us so the rich see challenges as opportunities and stepping stones while the poor see challenges as stumbling blocks and obstacles number six are you getting blessed the rich have great courage and persistence the rich have great courage and persistence whereas the poor easily give up poor people easily give up they start a business it does not work they quit they start building a house it does not work they quit but the rich they are courageous people when one door closes they force another one to open when one strategy fails they start another one wealthy people are highly courageous people they are persistent very persistent hallelujah you can see somebody who is rich five years after he told you in the name of jesus i'm coming out of poverty nothing has changed in his life but you come and meet him and his goal is still intact you laugh at him and say bros why are you fooling yourself just just agree that it's not your turn to shine and the person will tell you i'm still reading the book five years from the time he made that decision he's still studying the books he's still growing he doesn't have a car yet but he's still growing he's still staying in the old house but he's still growing you knew him with that one trouser five years later on he's still wearing it but he's still growing that's a rich man his status will most certainly change what have you given up on god gave you the direction god gave you the grace but he never told you the road will be easy preachers lied to you that if you are anointed it will be a bed of roses preachers lied to you that if god is with you it will just be a walkover preachers lied to you 
that if you are anointed you will start a business and it will be flawless because the holy spirit is at work in your life that is a lie from the pit of hell failure is a prerequisite in the school of success you have nothing to tell me if you have not failed in life you have not earned the right to counsel me if you do not have a track record of failure what you see today as your failure will become your symbol of wealth it will become the throne that you will sit upon rich people have failed you cannot imagine you cannot imagine how many times they will start 10 businesses all of them will fail they will do a lot of things it will not work but persistence and courage when everybody is criticizing them they are busy working when everybody is saying why must you keep doing this eh? someone tries to ask two ladies out you ask the first one she says sorry i'm already engaged you ask the second one say no 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 god has already revealed my husband to me you are not the one after two opportunities you will never ask a lady again to get married to because you see that and say kai me i, I can't i'm not a fool i can't be taking embarrassments like that. you will marry oh let me tell you in advance if you don't take the courage to continue ladies shout continue Every door cannot be closed. No, sir. One door will most certainly open. Hallelujah. Very important. Are you a courageous person? Are you persistent over your goals? Or do you just give up easily? I refuse to give up. In the name of Jesus. You're a pastor here. You you started a walk and it looks like nothing is happening and you are truly called but you are about to give up you are a businessman about to give up you are a family man about to give up refuse to give up and i tell you at the other side of your pain is celebration like a woman right when she goes in to deliver there are times she may want to give up and the midwives and the nurses are encouraging her and telling her don't worry don't worry say is it like that for every woman or no, is only me they say it's like that just just give up don't, don't give up for instance and then they continue motivating her and finally the baby is out sometimes she may need to go through cs as painful as it is the baby still comes the bible says do not be weary in well doing he said for we will reap in due season if you faint not but if you faint you will not reap. Say, I refuse to faint. Let me give us two more and then we'll move to the formula for wealth. Hallelujah. Ready? Number seven. The rich are great risk takers while the poor are always afraid to take risks. Wealthy people are great risk takers. They step out of their comfort zone and they walk on water. If I perish, I perish. If I fail, I will learn from it. If I succeed, let God be praised. Poor people are the easy goers. Hey, be careful, oh. Eh? You want to buy a golf and start a transport business. Somebody said, you know, the way Nigeria is, they will go and hijack your car somewhere. Have you not seen people minding their business and now robbers entered and carried the car from the garage and went with it? The rich are great risk takers not foolish risk takers but great risk takers in 2010 when we were having the kingdom wealth summit i taught them that the spelling of faith in the world of finance is r i s k spell it r i s k when you are spelling faith in the finance world that's how it is spelled you must take risks You must take risks not foolish risks but you must take risks it's a risk to marry it's a risk to be single it's a risk to start a building project it's a risk to get a job don't you know it's a risk to transport yourself from here to sabo every day for work is that not true you can have an accident something can happen god forbid but a crisis can break out something can happen that can affect you is it not a risk but it's a risk worth taking. When you tell somebody you want to marry him, is it not a risk? 
you are willing to submit to a man whose ideologies you are not exactly you are not 100% sure of. you don't know what he can become yet you are willing to do that it's a risk life is a risk not taking a risk is a bigger risk You must take risks. This ministry is a risk. Nobody gave us a guarantee that crowds will be inside and outside. Faith is spelled R-I-S-K. When the people were setting up the sound in the morning, none of you signed an agreement that by 5 o'clock you will be here. None of you signed an agreement. But it took courage. We had to step out. Haven't prayed. Haven't fasted. We have believed God and we are taking a risk. Miracle service is a risk. You don't know who is coming with whatever sickness. People can bring the dead. People can bring anybody. But you, you are willing to take that risk. Are you willing to take risks? Or you are part of the easy people? When I was in secondary school, there was a Babin saloon called Easy Does It. You do that for life, you will fail. Oh, just, just take it easy. Don't, don't do this customers didn't come today close your shop it's a sign that god is not with you who told you it's a sign that god is not with you it's a sign that you are growing it's only a witch as a baby who will just get up imagine that a woman gives birth to a child and he just stands up mommy where's the food that's a that's a wizard that's that's an illegitimate child that's that's a that's a, a breed between angels and men that's not a pure human being and jesus grew everybody say it jesus your king of kings he grew in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men if jesus grew you must grow hallelujah lastly number eight the difference between the rich and the poor the rich have a positive mental attitude Please write, write, write it down as fast as you can. The rich have a positive mental attitude. Please pay attention to what I'm telling you. Because after this, I'm about to teach you what I call the grand formula for wealth and abundance. I give you a guarantee. I give you a guarantee that anyone that diligently follows this, even the dullest of us, if you follow what I'm giving you, you will be rich. And rich does not mean buy a car, buy a house. That's survival. The rich, write it down please, have a positive mental attitude towards the opinion of others. The rich have a positive mental attitude towards the opinion of others and never let opinions kill their dreams. The rich have a positive mental attitude towards the opinion of others and never let opinions kill their dreams while the poor are easily influenced the poor have a poor esteem of themselves the poor have a poor esteem of themselves and are easily influenced away from their dreams by the opinion of others the poor they fundamentally have a poor esteem of themselves. And so, when people begin to talk about them, they are easily influenced away from their dreams by the opinion of others. So many of us are here right now. So many of us are here. The opinions of people is what has stopped you from being rich. What would they say? What if I fail? Will they laugh at me? The other time, they saw me frying Akara and the news spread around Samaru. So what? So what about it? Have you forgotten that if you remain persistent, those who laugh at you will laugh with you? That the reason why they are laughing at you is because they are secretly intimidated by your persistence. Criticism is simply an opinion harshly expressed. It's an opinion. There are people today, Joshua Selman is to them a great man of God that they love. There are people today, Joshua Selman is a devil and a fake man of God. There are people, Joshua Selman is whatever they want to call. I learned by experience to ignore 
the opinion of others and to move forward if you follow what people say about your life they will kill you and ask others to come and see your dead body whether you do well they will talk about you whether you do bad they will talk about you they are still talking about jesus and we are still talking about satan everybody in between will be talked about so deliver yourself tonight in the name of jesus christ from the influence of the opinion of others they are spreading rumors around that i like money is it true no mind your business say see I heard that you are the one that said, I'm, I'm not, I'm not. What? Look, let me tell you. Trying to defend yourself is the quickest way of trying, of, of giving people an impression like what they are saying is true. They now start using wise sayings like there's no smoke without fire. There can be smoke without fire. Ask those who smoke cigarettes. Status is changing, there's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Sing it one more time. Status is changing, there's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way, I'm on my way. let them keep talking while you produce the results anybody can say what he wants to say about you please brothers and sisters hear me don't starve yourself of sleep because of what you think people are saying can I tell you something? No matter what people say about you, the world is full of troubles. Very soon they will forget about your issue. Another issue will come and supersede your issue. So you can as well let the sleeping dog lie. Are you getting what I'm saying now? If a lady runs here right now and says this baby is Joshua Selman's baby, I've told people, I will only ask one question. Online, how did you get pregnant? Online, are you getting me not that i'll sit down and say hey, hey i need to gather a committee now my reputation is at stake i'm a dead man already let the one who sent me defend him if he's comfortable with it fine and good ah i i will never stab myself sleep because he say, i called you i called you you didn't pick that's how all men of god are that's your opinion am i like that no so i go to bed learn to frustrate useless opinions in your life ah mama this and that is a wicked woman every time we come to fetch water the way she looks at us are you wicked no so mind your business but you start running around the whole new extension telling everybody how about you man you know am i wicked is it not me that gave your child school fees no 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 save yourself all that nonsense rich people have a healthy mental attitude don't think they will not talk about you just like you have spoken about others let me assure you your turn is coming when you see someone gossiping and talking just pity him and nod your head because his own is coming good measure pressed down shaken together yes for sure you have not started a church and you are criticizing every man of god must it be like this must it be like that the day you start a church and for two months you are looking for one volunteer to be part of your ushering team at that point you will know it takes grace leadership wisdom and audacity when you see preachers preaching and you see men of god standing up to concur to what they are saying they can relate with it are you getting the point when you fast and pray the gentleman stood here to give testimony and he said it's not easy to stand here you think it's easy to stand here and jump around until you come and stand here you won't know whether you hold the mic with your left or right hand i once watched some a christian comedy show they were doing an auditioning for comedians these guys are supposed to be the funniest people in their various places and they came together and when they came together i was just looking i didn't laugh for one minute they were afraid their jokes disappeared 
Archbishop Benson Idahosa said, until you do what somebody has done twice, don't talk about him. After two years, you mean this guy still has a small shop like this? How about God? Don't fall our hand. And then the day you open your own, that looks like, looks like a restaurant, and you find out that nobody comes from morning till night. You will do bonanza 50%. Nobody will still come. At that point, you go back to that bros and say, bros, you did try. You're well done. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I have a healthy mental attitude about myself and I refuse to let the opinion of others kill my dream. Say it. I refuse to let the opinion of others kill my dreams. They will talk about you. They will laugh. They will scorn you. It's a sign you are making progress. May your life not be so boring that your critics ignore you. May your life be the news in their secret place. That every time they are talking, they say, my God, they are trying to criticize you, but they are announcing you by extension. So many people came for Koinonia as a result of criticism. They came to find out what is all this? How can a young man be so anointed? And when they came, some of them from outside, their headache disappeared when they crossed in and they sat down. At the end of that meeting, they have brought more than 50 people to Koinonia. Criticism can be a great tool of publicity. Don't stop yourself from shining. Is God speaking to us? Ladies and gentlemen, I bring before you right now the grand formula for wealth and abundance. Pray in tongues for one minute. Your life is about to change right now. Please pray inside and outside, wherever you are. In one minute, I'd like you to pray. Hallelujah. The day I found this key, I shouted. I not Oyedepo's, I will never be poor. My own. I shouted. Shouted. Where is the document? Let me sign out of poverty forever and ever till Jesus returns. Ready? Write this down. The formula for wealth and abundance. I told you there is an exact formula. There is an exact formula. Ready? Write this down. The amount of money we receive. The amount of money we receive. Open bracket. Your wealth or your income. Your wealth or your income. The amount of money we receive will always write always in capital letter will always be in exact proportion the amount of money we receive will always be in exact proportion to then write colon number one there are three things i'm about to tell you now the amount of money we receive your wealth your income will always this is a law be in exact proportion to number one the demand or the need for what you do the amount of money you receive will always be in exact proportion to number one the demand or the need for what you do put in bracket the product or the service you offer the demand underline the word demand the demand for what you do. Number two, your ability, open bracket, your skill, expertise, proficiency, and then you can close it. Your ability to do what you do. Your ability to do what you do. And number three, the difficulty in replacing you.
the amount of money listen listen the amount of money we receive this is a law please listen i'm giving you a key that will set you free forever the amount of money we receive will always be in exact proportion to number one the demand for what you do number two your ability to do it and number three the difficulty in replacing you look at what you just wrote the demand for what you do your ability to do what you do and the extent to which it is difficult to find another replacement to you this is the grand key the irrefutable law when you break prosperity to its unit the atom of prosperity is this the amount of money joshua selman will ever receive in his life is proportional to the demand for what i do my ability to do what i do and the difficulty in replacing me the difficulty in getting another alternative to me let's take it one by one number one the demand for what you do this is the formula for wealth brothers and sisters i searched and i found Every millionaire I studied, every billionaire I studied, every wealthy family, every wealthy church, every wealthy business subscribe to this formula. The amount of money where you are sitting right now looking at me, the amount of money that will come into your life will be in exact proportion of the demand for what you do your ability to do what you do and the difficulty in replacing you. Write this down. Never try to provide a service where there is no notable demand for it. Never try to provide a service where there is no demand for it. This is what makes a lot of people fail financially. You are answering a question nobody is asking. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Look at this. Look at this. If, if this is my business for instance, the level to which I will succeed in this business is first if there is a demand for this. Is that true? If there is no demand for this, who will pay you for it? Nobody. So many people are starting companies and corporations without asking whether there is a notable demand for what you are trying to provide. The first key to wealth is to realize that you are only paid for something when there is a demand for it. If there are no children in a place, why will you sell pampas? There is no demand for it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Never try to start a business. When you want to get a job, trust God to get a job in a place, a corporation, a firm, where there is a demand for their service. Nitel in Nigeria is almost packed out because technology diminished the demand for their service. Are you seeing that now? When there was a demand, what happened? They were rich. They had money. Are you getting what I'm saying? Typewriters. Those who sell typewriters today, if they did not change, will they be rich? Because there is no more demand. Never try to provide any service when there is no demand this is the reason why ministers have their churches full because there is a demand for what they are giving
they think they are rich because they are preaching the gospel hear me koinonia this crowd inside and outside is here tonight because there is a demand are you getting what i'm saying this ministry is excelling not just because god called us god called us yes but we are responding to a demand for as long as there is a demand for my anointing i remain relevant for as long as there is a demand for the dimensions of the realities of the kingdom that i teach they will continue to be relevant the amount of money we receive will be in exact proportion not to what you do the demand for it you started a business you never found out whether there was a demand for it that's why when wealthy people are about to come to Africa and start businesses the first thing they do is they send envoys representatives to come and give them statistics they are testing the waters to see if there will be a demand they will never come to Africa until they find out that there is a demand to the size to which even if they fail they will still succeed that's how the wealthy think is God speaking to us write this down continue the points that you wrote at first you either create a demand first when you want to provide any kind of service spiritual financial educational whatever you must either create a demand for it first open bracket through exposure orientation and advertisement you either create a demand for it or satisfy an existing demand look up please okay write, write it down and look up you either create a demand for what you want to offer that means make people want it or see that they already want it by default and supply it let me tell you something look up this is the key behind the wealth of Igbo people I'm not being biased an Igbo man will never supply anything he has not ascertained a demand for that's the reason why when others are running away somewhere he knows there will be a demand for that thing and then he will go there unconsciously unconsciously many people do not know this is the law that they are fulfilling as at as at when the phones come into nigeria It depends on which one you're talking about. Generally, Nitel had one thing like that, what our protocol used now, right? That's how it started. Now, watch this. Did you know that until phones came in terms, I mean, our wireless mobile communication now, until phones came, we, we had that one that you dial, right? You touch it, and then it goes back. You continue, and then it goes back. 73142, and then your state code. You, you remember that, right? watch this some people sat down at the cutting edge of technology and they said no we have something to offer and this is what they said these people do not know about that possibility so we use advertisement to create a demand when they brought out indomie in nigeria what happened they use advertisement and you are watching they show a beautiful lady and she picks up the the indomie and she's taking it and you are just celebrating what they are doing is they are creating a demand immediately after that you say eh, please go and buy me um, this and that and that they create a demand for it or they meet an existing demand write this down always respond to demands and you will be rich respond to demands I think it was the last school of ministry students i was teaching them on finance in school of ministry and i told them if i'm to do business in a crusade ground i won't sell pure water if i'm to do business in a crusade ground i will do mobile toilets is there a demand for it you are joking you are joking sooner or later no matter how bold you stand you are in a crusade ground from 3 p.m in the afternoon for a night vigil Abba, you will need to ease yourself and i won't be there you even know it's my own but you just see me smiling 
the goodness of God. As they are worshiping, I will lift my hands. Because the amount of money that comes to me is dependent on the demand. So I look for the demand. What are they looking for so desperately that they will be willing to do anything? May God help you that you are not purging on that crusade ground. You will demand my service a thousand times. And that's good for me. That's exactly the kind of atmosphere I want. As far as my business is concerned. It may look messy, but forget the money is not dirty. You don't defecate on the money. Right? Are you learning something tonight? When a demand for a value or service becomes overwhelming, I want to give you a secret, a big secret right now. Many of you will not imagine how much you would have paid for if you were in a business class. When a demand for a value or service becomes overwhelming or very high, listen, your wealth index grows faster and you can easily get back to your feet even when your business crashes. Let me explain to you what I mean. There is a way, there is a way there can be so much demand on your product that even if you mess up, the demand is too high that you become too big to fail. Are you getting what I'm saying? Absolutely. Look at this. How many days did fuel go off in Nigeria? I mean, I know there are still, there's still pieces of scarcity, but remember the time when all the marketers went? Within 72 hours, Nigeria lost billions. It literally crippled them because of the huge demand for energy. Is that true? Huge demand for energy. There are certain values that when you provide, it becomes almost, humanly speaking, impossible to fail because the demand is, is, is overwhelming. Pure water. Pure water will never fail in Nigeria till Jesus comes. For as long as there is sun, there will be need for it. We drink water like camels in Nigeria. You finish one bag of have you seen people take water somebody will just take and hold one and squeeze it like an orange take another one take another one that's money going five five naira or ten naira if it's cold right and 50 naira just disappeared right now bang, 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 bang. and the person selling it is smiling and the person consuming it is paying every day you must bath at least I believe yes you should bath I'm speaking to the wider audience not just you there are thousands of people full right so the demand for soap will never stop and the demand is so high every day somebody's birthday photographers will never run out are you getting me restaurants will never pack out if they pack out is a demonic thing because you are supposed to eat normally three times a day. If you are busy or you don't have money at least once. If you are fasting, that's alright. Praise God. I'm showing you that so many people are poor because they have not responded to demands. Those who have responded to the demands are the ones who are rich. Because you will pay for anything you cannot do for yourself. It's a law. Whatever you cannot do, Guys keep paying in the restaurant every day because they cannot do it for themselves. Always, write this down please, let's hurry up. Always be absolutely sure that there is sufficient and sustainable demand for the value or service you wish to provide before working on providing it. I repeat, always be absolutely sure that there is sufficient and sustainable demand for the value or service you wish to provide before working on providing it. Never get to do something without ascertaining that there will be consistent and sustainable demand for it.
the amount of money we receive will always be in exact proportion to number one, the demand. The demand. Watch this. Let me bring it to ministry so that you will understand. Watch this. As a man of God, do you know the reason why the healing and miracle ministries have crowds and inevitably have finances and the rest because there is a high demand for that grace. Are you getting me? There is a high demand. Usually the largest crowds come during the miracle service. There are people who because of distance cannot come for every service. But during the miracle service they will pay the price and come. Hallelujah. Because there is a demand. So if the demand for this anointing continues, Koinonia will only keep getting higher and higher. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Is there a demand for what you do? Or are you just doing it? Have you ascertained that there is a demand? The office where you are working is one thing for you to be employed, but it's another thing for the service you are receiving to be needed. Never try to answer a question nobody is asking. The second point, your ability to do what you do. We said the amount of money you receive will be in exact proportion to your ability, your skill, your expertise. Ability and skill and expertise is how you become a leader and a pace setter in what you currently do. Skill and ability. There is a direct relationship between skill and financial abundance. Please never forget this. There is a direct relationship between skill, between expertise, between competence and proficiency and financial abundance. It's not enough to be anointed. It's not enough to have something to say or just to talk. There must be skill. There must be skill. You are enjoying what he's playing because although we're in a spiritual house, there is skill. You see that? I'm preaching. You think I'm just talking until I break down the psychological implication of the things I'm saying. And you see all the things that are interplaying. In the midst of my sermon, you are laughing. In the midst of my sermon, I'm rebuking you. In the midst of my sermon, I'm challenging you. All of this requires skill. It's not just anointing. Are you getting what I'm saying? Your ability to do what you do. I love how some people that peel orange. Have you seen those people that sell orange? They are so flawless. You bring orange to them and you see them talking. They are just talking and peeling it. When you see a master do something, it becomes flawless. That's how you must be if you want to be rich. Don't think rich people are dafts. Rich people are highly skilled people in the area where they function. Those who are promoted in every organization are those who are skilled. Many believers do not pay attention to skill and expertise. We pray in tongues. We fast. But organize any program for capacity building and see people reject it. They think it's carnal. They think it's not spiritual. So the man sets up the church and he does not know how to speak to people. You enter the presence of rich people and you don't know the skill to communicate to them and so they throw you out of that place. You speak to business people and you don't have the skill to talk to them. Ministry is not about preaching and throwing people on the ground. There is a lot of skill and proficiency to it. If you think it's so easy, try it. And you will be shocked that you'll be saying what everybody should laugh and they'll be looking at you with anger. That's why you won't know what to say again. You will know that it's not just about cracking jokes. There is a skill, not just a spirit. The Bible says, and David led the people with the integrity of heart and the skillfulness of hands. David did not throw Goliath just through the anointing. It took skill. The Benjamites, theologically speaking, they were so skilled in throwing slings that they could diverge arrows. In other words, you could shoot an arrow and they will use a sling and diverge it. They were that skilled. So don't you think God just came upon this guy? Samson was not just anointed alone. He was skilled. 
Bezalel. Have you read about Bezalel? The spirit of creativity and excellence came upon him. The three Hebrew boys. The Bible says, and in all the matters that they were tested in, they were found ten times better. How many times? In what you do, do you have ability or just desire? You set up a restaurant, nobody likes your food. Something is wrong. There is a demand for it, but there is no skill. And you think it's demons. You are fasting and running around your parlor, whereas you should go and settle down and meet a caterer, not a mediocre. A caterer. Buy the truth. It will cost you. Buy the truth. Wealthy people are the ones who can pay one million naira to bring a mentor into their lives to teach them something. You would think it's a waste. You are paying somebody one million just to talk to you, but they value it that much. How many believers can pay for knowledge? They don't want to. They just want to receive average and so they remain mediocre. Is God speaking to us? It takes skill. What he's playing, he didn't just learn it by the anointing. An anointing came upon his skill. The fire will never fall until there is a sacrifice. What skill are you lifting up to God to anoint? He said he will anoint the works of your hands. I'm not just talking of business. I'm talking of skillful business. See yet thou a man diligent, 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 skillful. Many preachers are not skillful. Many business people are not skillful. Many employers and employees are not skillful. Skill is not just an impartation. It is learned. It is learned. It will cost you. You will sit at the feet of uncommon mentors to learn. But are you willing? Everybody say ability. I made a vow in my life that everything every service and every value I want to offer my generation, I will be a master in it. Let me tell you, as you see me like this, don't, don't let these suits and all these things deceive you. I'm such a workaholic, you would not like my life. You will like me when you see me on suit standing. If you come close to me, you will run away from me because my life is irritating. There's no room for laziness whatsoever. There are things I do every day no matter how much I'm tired. Do you think preparing for this, you don't want to know how many books were read. You don't know how many books I read, how many materials I consult to just bring one message. One message that you just hear for two hours. You don't become wealthy when you are lazy if you must bring facts. How many videos I've downloaded on YouTube Listen to them in fasting and prayer. Converted them to MP3s to listen to them. Listen to three hours, six hours videos and summarize them in major points. Work on them. Edit the part of them that is unscriptural and add a scriptural touch to it. That's hard work, brother. And all that is for one sermon that you just receive and say, wow, the sermon is impressive. Are you getting what I'm saying? I returned back. We, I, we went to Bida on Saturday. And then on Sunday, I was there. On Monday, Tuesday, I passed through Abuja to Kogiste to go and greet the family of, of our dear one who transited. And from there, I returned. The school of ministry students were there. I think it was, was it yesterday, right? I returned. As I returned, I just went to take my bath and rush. We were here having lectures from 6 to about past 10. I had barely rested when I got up and then I had to plan, do a lot of things, had to run to town, see a few people this afternoon, I am here. First thing tomorrow morning, I'm off to Kaduna. We have a meeting in Kaduna. From Kaduna, we're passing straight to Kano for an evening meeting. Sunday, we're back, 3 o'clock on the dot, there is lecture, school of ministry. Monday, there is counseling from morning till night. And next week is my birthday. Hello, don't you ever, hold on, don't talk, we'll talk about birthday after the service. If you ever think wealthy people do not deserve their money, change your mind tonight. You don't know how hard they work. There are people, 6 o'clock, their shops are open. 
they close past 12. There are others who open to 12 and they close to 7. Skill. Diligence. You get up and you say you are a motivational speaker and they ask you what is success. Say, according to Brian Tracy, according to you, what is it? You get up and you are a preacher and all you are doing is copying and pasting messages. As you are preaching, they will help you complete it and tell you where you got the sermon from. And they will tell you the site you downloaded. No originality. It takes skill. You think it's easy to, to buttress points. I can communicate any point and sing a song to support it. Listen, it's not just anointing. It is skill. Right? You know how many things the worship team people don't eat to sing well? You just know every time you hear them, you are kneeling down. Find out how many things are out of bounds for them. Things they love so much. He that desires mastery is temperate in all things. What are you willing to give up to be skillful? Don't just say, ah, apostle is blessed. Guy, koinonia is lucky. Oh. Wait until you see our leadership trainings. Wait and see the, 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 the workshops and the retreats that we have for our leaders. Wait and see the way we build them. You come and see the, the various departments. You think these guys are just standing by default? Look at the ushers standing and positioned. They have been trained to be sensitive to the anointing. Go for a meeting somewhere and see how people break chairs and wound themselves. But you, before you get to the ground, somebody has come to hold you. It's a skill. Because they are holding people who are bigger than them. There is a skill. We are that meticulous. So don't just say God is prospering. We are blessed. We are blessed through skill. Hallelujah. Let's hurry up so we can stop somewhere. Skill and expertise is the, key, is the key to promotion and increased salary. You see somebody who has been grumbling and hating his boss. Tell him, be skillful. Be skillful, then you can pray. Stop drumming at the gates of heaven when you are not skillful. Let me tell you something. I humorously tell people, if I'm your boss and you are not skillful, I can be a good pastor to you, but I'll fire you. And I'll fire you because I'm a serious Christian. Hallelujah. I will never entertain a worker in church, for instance. I mean, maybe there is, I'm, I'm your boss in an office somewhere, and you think because we are members of Koinonia, you are not serious, you will never get the job. Never get the job. I don't do all those kinds of things. Say, remember, we are from the same place. Whether we are from the same room, if you have not demonstrated the skill, if you are so much of a liability for me, I will bless you with direct money so that you will go, but not to commit things to you. He gave unto some five, some two, and one according to their several ability, not their prayer request, their ability. Their ability. I hammer it on the workers to be skillful. And it's my desire to see everybody who is at the sound of my voice. You must become skillful at something. You must become an expert in something. You can't become jack of all trades and master of none. You have to lay your hands on something. Be a master in it. And I guarantee you, you're on your way to the wealthy place. You see the implication of the formula you were just jumping around on? Demand for your service is not enough. You must have both the psychological and intellectual know-how to satisfy that demand. Write it down. Demand for your service is not enough. You must have both the psychological and intellectual know-how to satisfy the demand. The person who babs me is here in Koinonia. He is so skillful. I love him so much and he babs me. No matter how you love me, I will not submit my head to you to play around with. I don't have that luxury. I love you. I can, I can, I can help you. I can teach you. But I won't do that. 
how many people are not skillful in what they do we are prayerful but we are not skillful say i receive grace to be skillful let me tell you the truth skill is an asset skill is an asset if this guy is so broke if he is so broke today that nothing moves all he needs to do is go to a hotel in abuja just ask for permission to sit somewhere and then he will begin to play and someone will see him and say can you come and play for one program what's your cost and he uses other psychological factors and walks his way out of poverty forever because of skill the next level of your life is at the mercy of your skill not at the mercy of God alone at the mercy of your skill man of God your preaching skill will determine the next level of ministry your leadership skill your financial intelligence what you are receiving right now there are people standing outside no seats for them there are people looking through the window they are passionate to receive that skill and I guarantee you in a short time their lives will show meditate on these things the Bible says give yourself wholly to them that your profiting will appear unto all there is nothing as lovely as an anointed person who is skillful it's a combination of grace and power anointed and skillful not only that you are anointed to sing you know the rudiments of music that will make you exceptional you are a businessman you are not just a businessman offering services you are exceptionally skilled when your contemporaries look at you they name you after your competence you walk in your office and they give you a name that is synonymous to skill even your enemies will recommend you and say please promote this guy we hate him but there is nobody in this company who can do it as him i gave you a story of somebody in this country he works three jobs three jobs and he works only three times in a week he is so skillful. He is the brain behind many successful companies in Nigeria. I will not mention the names of the companies. You will be surprised. They beg him. He works only three times. Three times in a week. And the minimum salary he gets for every one of those jobs is 500,000. Minimum. And he works only three times. Skill will defy race. Skill will defy gender skill will defy age if you are skillful the world will honor you that's why wole soinka received the nobel prize nobody said you are from africa that's why zuckerberg at 30 or 31 is still among the world's richest people skill defies age i'm giving you a key if you sit down in mediocrity, you will beg for bread. I choose to be skillful in every area. I choose to be exceptional. I avoid premature manifestation. While others are running, let them run. I will stay back and I will sharpen the knife. You are a drummer, be skillful. I've hammered on these guys. You don't want to know how skillful these guys are. I've seen their diligence. Our technical people, we emphasize skill, not just anointing brothers and sisters. It takes skill. It takes skill. It takes skill. The difference between CNN or BBC and one Christian channel around that looks as if the television is not working well is skill. It's not anointing. You watch some channels and you are angry. You are angry. Did they have to do it this way? They want cheap labor. Rather than going to call a media consultant and pay him to produce something that is world class and coordinate this, they refuse. They say there's one brother who offered to help us. And they remain in mediocrity to their detriment. Powerful message from the throne, but nobody can listen. Many people try to write books and they don't consult with people. They bring out a book that is, the message is deep, but the skill, the artistry in writing it is not there. T.D. Jakes wrote one skillful book, Woman Thou Art Loose, and he made four million dollars from one book. Four million dollars. Multiply that by 210, and it will give you the Naira equivalent. 
one man's skill build him out of poverty one skill you have written 10 books nobody even knows because you wrote every you wrote like you are talking they didn't teach you that there is a skill you stood somewhere and you sang a song and the people in the program vowed that they would never bring you for that meeting again. Were they blessed? Yes. Were they embarrassed? Yes. Why? You had anointing without skill. You had access to cook for a millionaire. You would have been his personal chef. You blew that moment. You were praying in tongues in the kitchen but there was no skill. The food burned. Everything went wrong. Skill. Papa Adeboye said this himself he said when the redeemed campground started he said that they they paid very little attention to the aesthetics of the place they were more focused on the spiritual impact so people would come ceos managers billionaires will come and sit down and heat will will disturb them and he was making everything uncomfortable and god spoke to him and he said a ceo has ac in his office in his jeep he has ac in his parlor bedroom kitchen everywhere there is ac and then he comes to a very established ministry like that and heat is destroying him and he said they started making plans to add to the aesthetics of the place skill 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 let me talk on the last point and then we'll find somewhere to stop skill is an asset it has rewarded me i have seen the fruit of skill in my life i have seen it exceptionally as i travel to go for meetings i not only see the beauty of anointing i see the excellency of being skillful the bible says study to show yourself approved a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word skillfully dividing it when I go for meetings, we go together with the protocol and the worship people. And I watch them as they look at me. When they say, let's now welcome Apostle Joshua Selman. And people are clapping. I'm happy because I have the skill. There's nothing you can do about it. I have it. I paid the price and God gave it. I am grateful, but I'm not apologetic about it. I know the people are going to be wowed. Just give me 10 minutes of audience and I will shock you. That's all I need. And when I pick up the mic, I know what to do with wise counsel make war i know that at the end of that meeting somebody will invite me again it's not pride it's the truth you can be that confident skill please when you go back home throughout this week some of you as you go home just sit down and think of your life please don't be in a hurry to sleep you've been sleeping for years wake up this night and think and say look at how i've been playing with the opportunities god has been giving everything you do nobody demands what you do again because you are not skillful they ask you to supply clothes you supplied nonsense you packaged it in a rubbish way you delivered it in, in an unintelligent and unprofessional way and they vowed not to give you that opportunity again we're on our way to better days now you can sing the song well we're on our way to better days it's not just a song I'm on my way to better days hallelujah yesterday when I was coming from Abuja a woman met me and then when she met me she wanted me to talk to her on some things I spoke to her on a few things and when I was talking to her this woman was looking at me and she said what kind of human being are you where are you getting this and I was on my way going I said on my way I'm on my way rushing and she said please can you give me a minute and she ran to her room and this woman brought out an envelope with dollars and said take I said no no no, no, no. what is this please no no I'm not I'm not ready and she squeezed it into somebody and I said this is somebody's salary for how many months the gift of a man the skill of a man I don't talk too much about my private life but I just want to challenge you a bit it has nothing to do with age it has nothing to do with gender are you getting what i'm saying i hardly buy things for myself people bring it in honor skill do you know that your skill can take you out from where you are and bail you yes you may be born in nazareth 
but don't die in Nazareth. You may be born in Nazareth. God is speaking to someone here. They think you are a non-entity, but may your skill prove them wrong. May your exceptional qualities prove them wrong. Number three, the difficulty in replacing you. Write this word down. To be valued means to not be easily replaceable. To be valued means to not be easily replaceable. To be valued means to not be easily replaceable. To be valued means to not be easily replaceable. Write this down. When your uniqueness or your strategy or your competitive advantage, whatever you want to call it, when your uniqueness or your strategy or your competitive advantage stands you out such that it becomes very difficult right when your uniqueness or your strategy or your competitive advantage stands you out such that it becomes very difficult to find a worthy alternative to you you will be very wealthy When your uniqueness or your strategy or as we call it in the business world your competitive advantage when it is so unique that it stands you out you can get another Joshua Selman but not easily. See that? There are many preachers but there is only one Joshua Selman. There are many anointed men but there is one Joshua Selman. No man can clone the grace. No man can, close the, can clone the skill. No man can clone the uniqueness. So you carve a niche that is free of competition. You carve a niche that is free of intimidation. You stand in a place where you are secured in your uniqueness. Because it's not easy to find a replacement. If you are easily replaceable, it's a sign that you will be broke. Let me tell you how you know you are not valued. Your absence is easily forgotten and ignored. When your absence is easily forgotten, when your absence is unnoticed, it's a sign that your impact is small. Yeah. If I come to work in your company, even if it is one day, I will do something that will make you chase me like your life depends on it. It's called value. The amount of money that comes to you is dependent on the difficulty in finding an alternative to you. When there is no alternative to you, they will pay whatever price. You will name your price. You will name your price. Hallelujah. I have taught people these things. It's difficult to get another mic. These guys are all skillful. It's difficult to get another Elijah. It's difficult to get them. No, they are all unique. David Dam is here. Come. All these guys you see, they are skilled people, but they have their uniqueness. There is a way David Dam is so unique, you cannot clone him, no matter what happens. There is a way Sam comes on stage, and you know he's in a class of his own. What do you have in your life that truthfully you can say, when it comes to this, God has put me in a class? Void of competition. Some of you, it's only trouble that you're in a class of your own. Gossiping. All these bad, bad things that are bad, bad qualities. That's what you are in a class of your own. Tonight, change. Everybody is selling. But there is a way you do yours. The day you don't open your shop, people come and there are five shops open, but they are waiting for you. They say, Abba, can't you buy? Say, uh -huh. There is, I like that smile. There is a unique touch to what you do. There is a way you do what you do. You are the happiest staff in your corporation. The day you don't come, the entire workforce is gloomy. They are, they are sad. They miss you. Some of you, nobody is missing you right now. It's bad. It's bad. 
It's a serious issue. Think about it. Nobody is missing what you are giving. ATC called me this morning and they said they wanted to do a novelty football match in honor of my birthday. They said they want to play a football match with Koinonia to honor me on my birthday. I said, wow, that's so touching. Who would do it for you and when? It's a serious question. I'm not intimidating you. Who has chosen to go out of his way to do something for you? You are saying there is no money. There are people they are chasing with money. People bless me every day. I say it in, with all humility. It's not because I'm Joshua Selman. When you are not easily replaceable, you become an asset even to your enemies because they need you to remain in business. They need your news to remain relevant. Even your enemies desire you to continue. Are you that unique? Or you are just general? I'm a general businessman general talkative what do you sell television what is unique about why should i come and buy tv from you and not from someone else do you have that uniqueness what do you do i plot who have you plotted many people what is your uniqueness is it that you plot on time is it that you plot well is it that the lady's hair will not pain her when you plot what is your uniqueness I refuse to be easily replaceable. I refuse it. Pray that prayer in one minute. I refuse it. Please pray. I'm showing you a key. We're not done yet. But I just want you to pray it. And then we'll do an evaluation quickly and we're out. Pray. They have belittled you because you are easily replaceable. You have refused to work on yourself. Money is available, I tell you money is available the millions are available you are not yet unique enough to be rich you have not qualified for the world you are grumbling about it you are complaining for five years you are still at that lower level somebody came a fresh graduate you paid his school fees he's now your boss to what degree are you easily replaceable pray Lord, may I be so unique that I become an asset, an asset to all and sundry. May my absence create a vacuum that cannot be easily filled. I'm ready to pay the price to be that unique, world class, not a local champion. You may start small but you hold on to strong convictions convictions that nothing will bend not cultural barriers convictions that nothing will bend not the limitations of your past convictions that nothing will bend pray an award-winning banker exceptional an award-winning ceo an award-winning man of god so anointed so unique you become a standard you become a leader you become a reference it's not a gift it's a reward it's not a gift hallelujah do this and in one day you will get what somebody will get in a lifetime Somebody who earns 100,000 per month. How much is that per year? How much is that per year? 1.2 million. How much is that in 20 years? 24 million. Someone can give it to you in one day as a reward to your uniqueness. The lifetime. One day my father looked at me and said, you are an old man. You are a young man with gray hair. What sort of person are you? May people look at you like Jesus and say, what wisdom is this? They look at you and wonder. They don't know what to say about you. Let me tell you something. Stop responding to your critics. The only response you give your critics is greater results. Greater results. Let them keep talking. The gap will be too wide. They will be forced to shut up. Continue moving. Let me tell you. What you are seeing in ministry right now, 
the level of excellence and the anointing is my preparation of yesterday tomorrow will show you what I'm doing today in my mind I've left this level no I've left this level I've left this level Gentiles this is what will make Gentiles come to your light and kings to their brightness millionaires will come and they will queue up they will queue up one woman asked me a question she said my son how come people come for counseling hundreds of people and they sit down from morning till night just to talk to you for two minutes and five minutes I didn't know what to tell her I said it's the same reason why a Baba or a rich man will run backward to see a herbalist and the herbalist say turn back and he will turn back he knows what he's looking for when you hold the keys to the door they will look for you they will beg for you they will pay you to open the door oh I found my way out of poverty I found my way out I found my way out there is an eternal demand for what I do I will never run out of relevance there is an eternal demand for as long as there is one soul that is not yet saved there is a demand for as long as there is one sick body that is not healed there is a demand for as long as there is one person one family under oppression I will be needed for as long as there are people who need to be taught the principles of the kingdom I will be needed the, the, we are an endangered species a million of me is still not enough to fulfill the demand you say you are a leader how uncommon are you one time I went to speak in a, a, a small business leadership conference and I sat quietly. There were bank managers and people. Everybody came and was just bragging and talking stories and speaking rubbish. I was very disappointed in all humility because I had high expectations for them. I didn't know how much I had worked on myself. They spoke and everybody spoke nonsense and I came out. When I spoke, brothers and sisters, I tell you the truth and I, I lie not. I do not know how many complimentary cards and all of that and all of that and they were talking and I looked. I said on a good day I will go to their offices and they will drive me out. Now they are following me with complimentary cards. Stop following success. Attract it through your diligence. Stop chasing money. Attract it through your skill. Stop chasing money. Pay the price and you will drive it away and it will refuse to go. It is for this very reason that doctors, lawyers, engineers, soldiers are very rich. This very reason. Those we call professionals. This is why. Because of um, they are, the kind of work they do requires a lot of skill. Right? Their professions require a lot of skill. That cannot be learned informally and then they require public licensing and authorizations to function so it limits the number of people that can imitate them that's why they are rich if you've ever wondered why doctors are rich engineers architects and all of the people that do what we call professional courses is because there are licenses and to get the licenses and authorizations you need to pass through something and not everybody can do that so they are few and the demand for what they have is so high and they can set any price any price may you be so powerful that you can name your price and people will still pay you and say thank you for helping us the same way you queue in a filling station you are going to use your money to pay for the fuel but you will say thank you because it's so much in demand there is none of you under the sound of my voice who will walk what I'm telling you and will not be rich no not one write a few things down we're rounding up number one you do not seek money directly write this point it's wrong and looking for money is an error you will never find it it's not missing you don't look for money directly 
money like health and happiness is an effect it's a byproduct you don't look for it directly you don't look for happiness directly you look for the things that bring happiness right you don't look for health directly you eat well and it produces health so you don't look for money directly money is an effect responding to a cause money is a byproduct of carrying out a formula stop looking for money you attract it I'm looking for money you will never find it never find it you may not like me tonight but you will tell me thank you tomorrow when you become a billionaire and your colleagues look at you and say Haba, didn't we school together you say but we didn't hear the same thing hallelujah You only set it as a goal and then you seek to provide services and solutions to increase your skill and bring it into your life. I'm summarizing to you right now. Two ways you get rich. Number one, you get rich by increasing or improving the service that you offer. You need to sit down and birth ideas for bigger services. What is a better way to do this? You need strategies. So I'm still buttressing on the first point. You need to increase the services. Whatever it is that you render. I'm telling you the truth. Repent of that cause for that, that thinking and that ideology of trying to get something for nothing. Listen. You can come and meet me today. You can tell me your problems. I can talk to you. And I can pray with you. There may be financial problems. I will look at you. I may give you minerals or malt or apples or whatever. And tell you God bless you. But I will be willing to carry one million. And give somebody who can solve my problem. I was always willing to give. You were not willing to receive. Are you getting that? Many people. You come to many people's houses to beg for money. They will not give you money. But they will carry 1.5 on their way to the bank on Monday. Go and deposit it. The money is always there. You don't get it by begging. You get it by offering service. If you solve a millionaire's problem, you have access to his millions. Valuable service will give you the keys to the wealth of people. I have met billionaires. I have met millionaires. I'm shocked and surprised to see the way they honor me and respect me and respect koinonia there is a woman she's a billionaire she jogs with koinonia messages every day she's passionate about me i was with her yesterday and i was amazed do you know how valuable you can be the people you are admiring today will admire you if you do what i'm telling you to do they will admire you there are people who i used to call sir before Today, I've met them. I still recognize them, but they don't recognize me. Many of the people who criticized me in the past have come for counseling today. And they never knew that I was the one they were criticizing. They came and waited for hours. And when they entered, I said, man of God, it's a privilege. I've been hearing about you. And like Joseph, I said, God bless you. How can I help you? And they say everything there. Many of them criticized and said all kinds of things. But their children recommended them to come. And now they keep, they are now seeing the son of man in power and glory. Oh, then he was a shepherd boy in Nazareth. Why will you remain this way after this teaching? I will weep. You saw me, see, I sat down here and I was, I was almost, almost shedding tears, honestly. I'm not an emotional person at all, but there is a very soft side to me. Because when I sat down, I was praying while the worship team was ministering. I said, Lord, will your people respect what I will tell them? Or must they suffer to a point that their lives are almost becoming miserable before they receive it? Many of you are doing well. Parents are helping you. You are not taking care of your finances. And so you may have very little value for what I'm sharing. Until the day you get married and you find out that you are the one who is the breadwinner. That's when you go and check the dictionary and find out the meaning of the word breadwinner. It means the absolute provider unassisted absolute provider 
and then you will now review this message again but the earlier you start the faster for you hallelujah the earlier you start the faster for you and then you increase your skill i told you you get rich by increasing your service and then you increase your skill in what you currently do even if it's to get a job there's part three of this and in that one I'll be teaching you multiple streams of income I'll be teaching you certain things the ocean never dries because every stream flows to it hmm. I will show you the mystery of Genesis chapter 1 the secret of unlimited abundance. And there was a river that went out of Eden and parted itself into four. I'll be teaching you on multiple streams of income. The key to Oceanic wealth. The very key. Ordinarily, I'm supposed to stop here. But then we'll go the extra mile. Because I hope that this becomes my contribution to your finances. That what our parents did not get, we're getting so that you are not without any excuse. Then you can sing that your status is changing. It no longer will become a cliche. You become magnetic. Absolutely magnetic. It will look like a charm, but money will look for you wherever you go. Personal evaluation. Write this. This is an evaluation for you to go and work on. Just three questions I'm about to ask you. Okay, I'll give you five. Ready? Number one, just write personal evaluations. These are questions that you answer. We're out of time so that we can pray. Sorry, we're taking a bit of time, but I think this is, this is worth it, right? Number one, what are the major solutions or value or service I provide? That's the first question you are going to ask yourself. Write it down. Be absolutely clear about it. What are the major solutions? What is the major value? What are the major services that I provide as a person? As a man of God, I provide spiritual solutions, for instance. That's what I do. As a man of God, I, I'm not just a preacher. I provide spiritual solutions. Right? And I know the exact solutions I provide. I'm bringing people to the point of intimacy and passion for God. That's a spiritual solution, right? I'm helping them to comprehend the principles of the kingdom. I'm offering spiritual solutions using the word of God and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That's the value that I'm giving to you. So I'm a businessman. This is my product. I'm giving you valuable service. A spiritual solution. I'm connecting you. I'm bringing you to closer intimacy with God. And I'm teaching you the principles of the kingdom that guarantee for a victorious life and a purposeful life. That's value I'm adding to you. And then I'm, I'm solving solutions. I, I mean, I'm providing solutions and solving problems supernaturally. On Friday is going to be miracle service. Another reign of miracles and the anointing of the spirit. That's a spiritual solution. There are people who are coming barren. I spoke to a woman, eight years barren. Next week she's coming and her problem will end. That's a spiritual solution. Somebody is coming who has been buffeted by darkness and light will come spiritual solution this is why i will remain blessed it's not because i'm preaching the gospel it's because i'm giving something are you seeing that now this is why preachers are rich this is why preachers are rich i refuse to celebrate my birthday many people have been asking why don't you celebrate your birthday i will celebrate my birthday birthday is not the day you were born it's a celebration of the reason why you were born I will begin to celebrate my birthday when I feel satisfied that I'm truly impacting lives. It's not just about cutting cake and smiling. It's about many people saying, thank God you were born. Hmm. Then you can celebrate it indeed. Question two. Is there a demand for the solution I am providing? question so question one what is the value what are you providing 
if you are working in an office, what are you giving? Really? What are they paying you for? You must know it. Don't just say they are paying me 10,000. No. If you know what they are paying you for, you can increase your salary by increasing what they are paying you for. You don't increase your salary by going to your director and say, increase my pay. No. When you increase your skill, your service, you are paid. Number two, is there a demand for the solutions I'm providing? Still on number two. If yes, how great and sustainable is that demand? Meaning what you are providing, whether as an employer, as a businessman, as an entrepreneur, as a leader, as a man of God, whatever it is. Is there a demand for what you are providing? And if yes, how sustainable is that demand? Will it fade with time? There is no amount of civilization that will make what I'm doing go extinct. I'm so happy for being a pastor. I'm so happy for being a preacher. I'm so happy for being a man of God. Because the more civilization comes, the more we are needed. You will never kick us out. We have come to stay. Praise the Lord. Doctors will never go out of extinct because darkness will cover the earth. People will be sick. Women are getting pregnant every day. Women are giving birth every day. Somebody is having a headache. Somebody is breaking the laws of health every day. The disobedience of men will keep medicine alive until Jesus comes. The military will keep reigning. Wicked people will continue. Careless people will continue. And so the military will never go out. Is there a demand for what you have to offer? And if there is, how sustainable is it? So that you know whether you should build your life around it or stop wasting your time. It is painful to build your life around a service and then it no longer becomes needed. And you are left there despondent. Number three. Do I possess all the skill and expertise required in providing the above solutions? Okay, so it is true now that you have identified what you are doing. The service, the valuable service. Right? And you have seen that there is a demand. The third question is, do I possess all the skill required in providing the above solutions? You can put in bracket, am I aware of all the skills required in the first place? You are a preacher. Are you aware of all the skills required in preaching well? Or you are just carrying the mic and moving around? Are you aware? And if you are aware, have you cultivated them? As a businessman, have you cultivated your communication skills, your people skills, your leadership skills? Right? Have you mastered goal setting? Have you mastered the principles of execution? Have you learned how to coordinate people? Have you learned how to develop a team spirit in people? Have you learned how to motivate people to achieve a common goal? Have you learned that? Do you have financial intelligence? What do you understand about accounting and documentation and auditing? Have you gone that far to know anything about it? Have you learned how to, to motivate people when they do not have courage? Or are you just a businessman, a CEO, moving around with complimentary cards, packaging with no content? As an employee, are you so skilled? Are you so skilled? Do you know your onions well? Can you do your stuff so well? Number four. Number four. Write two things. Just two. Write two things that you can do daily be, to become exceptional in your field. Two things. Write two things. There are many things you can do. But write two things. What two things can you do daily from this night to start improving yourself in the area where you see God taking you to? If it's as a man of God, what two things will you do every day? As a businessman, what two things will you do every day? As an entrepreneur, as a leader, right? What two things do you think you can do every day to improve on yourself? five write down three major ideas that have come to your mind and you think will be in high demand write three ideas 
there must have been ideas in your mind especially when you were growing up before you were aware of wickedness before you were aware of the vicissitudes of life that kill the dreams of people write down these three ideas that you have so passionately pursued in your life that you so passionately desire and you know they will be in high demand ministerially entrepreneurial and all of that write it and then pick one of them just one and start working on it ideas are like a vehicle you can only get to one location at a time you can go everywhere with it but not everywhere at a time pick one 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 and start working on it many of us are doing too many things that's why you don't succeed too many things after the miracle service i'm going to be teaching us on the principle of execution it will be the last phase and then i'll also teach us on multiple streams of income i'm going to be sharing you a lot of with you a lot of things please make sure that you invite people the miracle service this weekend is going to be an unusual one hallelujah it's going to be characterized by a heavy outpouring of miracles and breakthrough for people praise the lord rise up on your feet everyone please rise up on your feet we're out of time i'm on my way to better days just sing it three times and we pray I'm on my way to better days. Yes, you really are. I'm on my way to better days. To better days, better days. Your status is changing. There's no more denial. You're on your way. prayer points lift your voice and thank the Lord for this information tonight lift your voice and thank the Lord for this information you only arise and shine to the degree to which your light comes you only arise and shine to the degree to which your light comes and the degree to which the glory of the Lord is risen upon you Gentiles will come to your light and their kings to the brightness of your rising your gates will be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. Where you have been deserted so that no man passes through you, you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. Pray and thank God for this information. Lord, I give you praise. I give you praise for the mental revolution. I give you praise for the equipping. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two cry for grace to take action based on this truth they had the word just like we did but the word did not profit them not being mixed with faith pray you have gotten some of the keys believe me what you have had tonight is not elementary at all at all this is the secret of winners pray it's the secret of the wealthy Praise, oh God, to put it to action. Hallelujah. Let's add one more prayer point. Lord, there must be a performance in my life. My eyes will see it. And my hands will handle it pray lord my ears have heard it but my eyes will see it and my hands will handle it are you praying koinonia my ears have heard this truth but lord my eyes will see it and my hands will handle it
lift your hands and I pray for you father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I pray let this teaching birth a financial revolution among your people in the name of Jesus raise millionaires from this teaching for the kingdom raise billionaires for the, from this teaching for the kingdom change the financial status of men in the name of Jesus let this truth crumble every financial limitation let this truth take you from a beggarly realm to a realm where you become a blessing that your life will fulfill the blessing of Abraham that indeed shall all the families of the earth be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ very quickly you are here for the first time you are invited or you came here tonight please keep standing thank you so much for making our time to come wherever you are please i like you to walk to the front we honor you we love you we just want to recognize you and bless you wherever you are inside or outside no matter how far please make your way to the front there is a blessing and a prophecy for you god bless you koinonia celebrate them come on thank you thank you for coming god bless you we have a prayer and a prophecy for you just make your way as fast as you can to the front make your way as fast as you can to the front thank you thank you we honor you we thank you for coming we bless you we bless you for coming hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord thank you so much for coming this is koinonia we thank our mothers we thank all the elderly ones who have come to worship with us we thank you we love you we truly truly cherish and celebrate you this is koinonia a meeting put together by eternity network international we're here every fridays next friday is our miracle service please and please as much as possible don't miss it it's a time when the lord will visit you and he'll do a lot of things praise the lord thank you for coming you will never be the same we're here every fridays and the lord is building us we're on our financial series and we're glad to have you be part of it stretch your hands saints of god and let's bless them we're anointed and when we prophesy over your life it will follow you speak blessings to them we bless you in the name of jesus we bless you with the wisdom of the spirit we bless you with passion for god we bless you we bless you may the lord honor you like jabez we declare that your coast be enlarged and you become more honorable than your brethren in the name of the lord jesus christ may the lord make you mighty may he strengthen you in the name of jesus hallelujah dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua Salmon, and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of jesus christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye